Okay. Hello, everyone. Today is August the 24th, 2021. I'm going to be reading a dream that I had on August 14th, so 10 days ago. Praise God. Um, hmm. All right, I'm just going to get started reading. So I called this dream Running from Obama. This is a terrifying dream. That's not even the word. It was terrifying and part of what made it so horrifying was that it was so real. It, it was so real. It was almost like, it was like you could feel yourself breathing. It was just real. All right, I'm just going to read it. It says, I don't remember the first part very well, but it seems that Obama was my husband, but from a distance. And I didn't get close to him and knew who and what he was and didn't go near him. He knew it and he stayed at a distance all while pretending to be a concerned husband and willing to leave things the way they are and let me be. Then he clamped down and seized and took control of us and told us his intentions. Now I know that seems strange because at first it was an individual thing and then there was an us. There was, there were, it was more than just me. He was going to capture and torment us, and Lord knows what else. All the pretending was gone, and he was his same old satanic self with every foul intention. He had been so good at pretending that he cared and was good and concerned that I almost could have believed that it was the real him. But the real him is an inhumane hatred, an inhuman hatred that is diametrically opposite to any best interest that you have. He is the exact opposite of anything that would take care of you. It's like you, the hatred alone was enough to just tear you apart. It was... The hatred by itself was threatening. It was so intense. And it wasn't just intense. It was all there was. <clears throat> so no part of him is anything, is for anything but your total destruction with the deepest evil intent you could imagine. His one track mind is our misery. He has a one track mind to see to it that he makes us as miserable as he possibly can. I was thinking how I knew he was still who he was, but I marveled how he hid it so well. Me and another lady were talking and planning about how to escape again. I saw the other lady planning on taking all this stuff. I knew that it was so important to get away and not be hindered by worrying about bringing a bunch of useless stuff and risk our escape. It was so urgent. I saw firsthand how needful it was to get out of there and how much trouble we were in. Nothing had changed. Everything was exactly as we knew it was. Don't go back and take anything. When you see the need to escape, think of nothing but getting straight out of there. Don't look back. Then I remember he came back to make sure I didn't get away. He was in front of people, so he was pretending to be good and caring. I was thinking maybe I should just refuse to go with him and make him expose himself 
by having to force, by having to use force and lose the pretense of innocent love and concern. This concerns public opinion. He was trying to protect public opinion because public opinion was on his side, believing that he was well-intentioned. But I figured if I did not, even though he was there, like lording over me with this threat of this hatred and evil violence, um, no one could see it. The, the public was convinced that he was doing what was good. But I figured if, um, even though he was threatening me and he, you know, could snatch us up and make us go or try to, I might as well try and resist because the last thing he wanted to do was expose himself. He wanted us to just be intimidated and go along easily but we really didn't have anything to lose we might as well resist okay so um he also had all force behind him all force he didn't want to use like physical obvious force but he had all force of law he had every governmental power there wasn't any power that he did not have, including the power of public opinion, including the, um, the will of the people. It was all by deception, but he had it. And if that had failed, he had uh, governmental military might as well. He wanted to do it peaceably to avoid the trouble. But he could have done it anyway. There was one other thing that I forgot. Okay, there was at one point, he when I say he came back to make sure we didn't escape, we were trying to gather some things to escape, but he came back. And he was having us gather up things to go with him somewhere. Where he, I knew he was going to torture us. And I didn't even know what else he was going to do to us. So while he was standing over us, while we gathered our things to go, he cleared his throat. He went, <clears throat> and when he cleared his throat, it made a sound like, like you, like in the movies when they simulate a demonic voice or an evil voice, how it sounds like, I don't know how to, it sort of sounded like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to um, imitate it, but it was just demonic. And it was so bone chilling. I think the whole thing was scary. But that was one of the scariest parts. It was so bone chilling because it was not human. It was demonic. There was nothing human to him. It was as though you had like glimpsed into a little, it was though you had um, taken a glimpse into a, a portal into hell. That's how his voice sounded. It was just like, oh, it was just like a little, I don't know how to describe it. It was as though if his skin broke open, like how they always show those images of, um, like people ripping off the human facade off of a lizard person, a lizard person, and then you, and it's exposing something and you're realizing that you're not looking at a human being. 
That's how his voice was. And that's what I could see was inside of me. It was as if there was like cracks in him. And oozing out of those cracks was hell. Hell. And the, the, the bottom of the pit, the most evil you could imagine. Just no human being will be capable of that type of evil. Human beings have limits. But evil, satanic evil. No people would deal with the devil if they could see him for what he was. He, he tricks them. He fools them. He presents himself as their friend. And he just has them thinking that they do bad things to other people, but he would never do it to them. Or whatever he tells them. But nobody would be worshiping if him if they knew that he's only for their destruction. And the depths of Satan that the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation. The depths of Satan. And then once people figure out that this alliance that they've made with him is against them and they want to get out, then that's when they, they have other tactics that they'll go to. That's why they can never talk. They'll be murdered. They'll be blackballed because it's such an ugly business. And different people have a different stomach for evil. All right. So I could have made that video closer to the time when I had it 10 days ago. And I kind of wanted to. So that visceral effect would be there. Because it was very, my feelings about it were very raw at that time. And um, that's the feeling that I had. It was very, it was a very raw kind of an evil. And it was very, and like I said, it was so real. And it was, um, it was a type of evil. It was a type of evil that I had never seen, even from him. Always knew he was dangerous and the dreams were always kind of frightening and very frightening. But it was in this dream, I saw the need for it. like. This is not something you want to tangle with. If you can escape, you definitely want to escape. If you can run away, you definitely want to run away. So I want to just interpret that a little bit to go through. So I think what this dream represents, it says, it seems like Obama was my husband. So you know how the government has authority over you. The same way a husband has authority over his wife. Now, the government has no business having authority. It's supposed to be God, Christ, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a man, his wife, and the children in that order. There's not supposed to be any government that can get in between that or usurp that. Man chose government. The Lord has set Israel free from being under a government by a man, and that was by Pharaoh. The Lord set them free and set them in their own land and let and guide them by judges, by his spirit. And they lost faith in that. And they looked around and wanted to be like the, the places around them having a king. So they set up their human government. Where now this human being 
with all the frailties and lust and and evil and all that stuff and the susceptibility to being um, influenced by the devil of a person. They put that over themselves. And now in these last hours, it has grown far beyond what anyone could imagine. The level of control and oppression and through the use of technology, the ability to act out on that control where there literally will be except the Lord hide us nowhere to hide so anyway so I think that's what the part about him being my husband was but it was from a distance so you see how the government is kind of up until now and starting to change right now, had this hands-off approach when it came to the uh, dissenters because of the remnants of the Constitution that says we have free speech. We have a right to disagree with the government, to express that, to discuss that, to form a party, um, opposing who is in power, not technically the government, because technically the government is supposed to be the Constitution. People are put in place under our pretense of government to uphold the Constitution. But now, through the use of various devices, they have usurped the Constitution. So now the, the people who are running the government are going above and beyond and around the Constitution and the Constitution is under their feet. So now we no longer have a government of law or of laws, if we ever did, because money has always bought its way around it. But the pretense that we had of a government of laws, now the people, the law is, is gone, deemed to be unnecessary, um, ineffective and then we have all these emergency orders and um, things like martial law that suspend the constitution that suspend the rules of the constitution so then you're left with human government so now the human government has no limits Unlike the Constitution, which put limits on what could be done. And then that was the concept of freedom under the law. But when you get rid of the Constitution, anything goes. The government is not restricted. So we always had the right not to be treasonous. And that is to have treason against the Constitution. But what they're calling treason and dangerous and, and illegal dissent and dangerous dissent is against the humans that have usurped the Constitution. We always had the right to criticize the humans that were administering the Constitution. And that is not treasonous. You can disagree with the people in your government. This is not treason. You have free speech to do that. Now, if you are attacking the very Constitution itself, then that would be considered treasonous. But to criticize the, the people in the government, there's no law protecting them from that. The Constitution doesn't protect that. We had the right to, um, to, mm, what is it? I forget what the wording is, but to, protest to the government for the redress of grievances. We're allowed to present our grievances to the government. You're allowed to pose, to, to um, form a party that is in opposition to the party that is in office. And they don't have the right to silence that. Because you're not anti-government, I'm anti-you.
there are places where if when you get an absolute ruler, they'll call it treason for you to go against them, not against a law, but against them. Not against a law, but against a whim. So this is what they're making it illegal to do, to criticize these people. We have the right to criticize these people. It was protected in the Constitution. But now, through all their media hocus pocus, they're able to make it seem like to public opinion, to the public that criticizing the people who are administering the government and the way the government is being administered is the same as something else that we don't have the right to do. We absolutely have those rights. Places where you have absolute totalitarianism, they don't have two-party government. You're not allowed to criticize the, the party that's in office. You're not allowed to criticize them. They have a one-party state. They don't allow an opposing party to form. And that's where we're headed. For now, we have the labels Democrats and Republicans. But that won't exist anymore because the people who are in office now are declaring what is true. They're through this magical thing that they call consensus. Deciding that this is true, everything else is misinformation, and it cannot be spoken of. We did not get here on those principles. The right to peaceably assemble. The right to openly discuss things that are unpopular. There was no establishing a consensus and then enforcing it against the people who disagree. So this was the mindset that Americans did have. You could disagree. You could disagree to the top of your lungs. And that's just the way it was. So Obama, he's been playing it cool. The government's been playing it cool. Um, you know, letting us put up all our dreams that we had, him being the Antichrist, because they have to go along with uh, this idea that we still have free speech. And, but now, they're not even hiding it anymore. Of course, YouTube is totally purged. The internet is totally scrubbed of anything negative that they don't want to see. They're trying to set precedents for these things being hate speech. They come out with a virgin version of events and call it history. And suddenly what they call history, they've declared it true and they make it sacred. That you can't disagree with it. You're a denier. If you tell a version that is does not completely 100% line up with what they say happened. That's not a government of laws. It is a dictatorship. It is a tyranny. It is a tyranny. It is people who are in control and they want to use every force that they have available to them to make sure they stay in control. And that is just the simple, the simple process of squashing your opposition. Destroying any criticism. So he was done in this dream. He was done pretending like it's okay 
that we don't agree. Because they're saying that it's not okay that people think the earth is flat. It's not okay. Why isn't it okay? Why is why isn't it okay that I think different than you? Suddenly it's not okay. It's not okay that you don't believe in vaccines. It's not okay that you don't trust the science. These are not lawful concepts. That kind of stuff cannot be coded into a law. The only law that that can fit into is I'm in charge and no one can question me. So he had dropped all that stuff that we have a right to to criticize our government. That we have a right to criticize those in government. That that's not considered uh, an inherent threat to the country that you criticize the government. That you're presenting a view opposing what they're saying. Presenting Presenting it to people. Having the right to openly discuss it. And have people choose. The only reason that you would not allow this is because you want to use a heavy hand and stay in control and get utter and total control. So when it says that all the pretense was gone and he was his same old satanic self, that he was who we always thought he was, it's like this time, this summer, this summer, has been a time of kind of releasing the tensions. Let's open the country back up. And in that pretense of normalcy, everybody, everyone I know, has kind of let their guard down in a very dangerous way. Because it's in that subtle spiritual way. Allowing yourself to believe that we're just roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Just in a subconscious way. That feeling of normal just kind of creeping in. Even though in the back of your mind, you know, nothing's the same. Everything is totally different. But we're just kind of moving along to accept this new normal. But really, we do know that nothing has changed. That everything that we saw and thought and knew is exactly the way things are. There is a new world order. The mark of the beast is here. All the technology is ready. There's a change in the people that you cannot deny. A godless change. And everything is fulfilled. And that same urgency that we had at the beginning of the year, they're trying to take that urgency away from us. But that urgency was renewed for me in the dream. Back that hang back type thing. You know, everything's okay. Your government is harmless. We love you. Gone. Here they come back. Full force. And I also want to mention something. The the Delta variant. I just have one thing to say about that. This right here. This is a triangle. A triangle is delta. Does that look familiar to you? When they're doing that, they're representing the uh, capstone of the pyramid. When they put it over their eye, they're representing the eye inside of the pyramid, which is the mark of the beast, which is on the dollar, which they say, in God we trust. That would never Yahweh. 
He said, you can't serve me and money. So Delta, this, this is the symbol for Delta. It's, it's the D in the Greek alphabet. And it looks, it is a triangle. And among my videos that were taken down, there was a dream that I had about the deltas. The triangle that they have is a, um, it's called an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal. All three sides are the same. And when you have an equilateral triangle, the interior angles of an equilateral triangle all equal 60 degrees. So when you have a triangle like that, each one of the interior angles, like that spot right there, that spot right there, and then on the other side, that spot right there, the angle of each of those inside the triangle, three angles, Inside the three angles, inside the triangle, there are three angles, each one of them having a measure of 60 degrees, three sixes. The trilateral commission. You could also call a triangle a trilateral. So there's your delta variant. There's the mocking right in our face. Um, so as far as escape again, because we were all geared up, it, it was like a, like a race with a false start on your mark, get set on your marks, get set. And then somebody false starts and there you could be disqualified from a race for a false start because you can do a false start in order to throw your opponent off because they're all geared up, their adrenaline is pumping. And when they take that false start, it, it just throws the race off for them. Everything is off after that. So you can have one person do the false start. When they're not the major competition, they can just be a sacrifice. And their job is to get the the person on the other team that you really want to beat to false to false start and to um, just be thrown off by that false start. This person may get disqualified for the false start, but he's not the one. He he was never going to beat that person anyway. You did it for the sake of the guy that you that you really want to beat him. I hope that makes sense. So we had a, a false start and then they put in this summer the way they did things, which we always knew from the beginning. Oh, they're going to relax things. And then because things were relaxed and people weren't wearing masks, then that will become the basis for saying, oh, it's back with a vengeance. And now people just think, oh, it happens to be back with a vengeance. But we said that from the beginning. We said that from the beginning. We said that from last March when all this started. This is never going away. It's never, and here it still is. If it's all conspiracy theories, then why does it keep always happening exactly the way that the conspiracy theories say that it will? All right. So, um, because of that kind of lulling to sleep, no one's geared up to run now. No one's geared up to run. Everybody's sluggish. It's, it's hard to duplicate 
that energy that you had at first before the false start. That's why it's such um, a big deal to have a false start in a race, which is why you can be disqualified for a false start because it is such a, a huge weapon and it is so disruptive. And after that person has had all those hormones and and all that stuff and all that adrenaline and stuff racing through their veins, it's hard for them to run their best race after that. So through prayer, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, through keeping our mind on Jesus, through asking him to re-prepare our minds, we can get ready to run again. And this time is for keeps. This time is for real. Because you can't false start twice. When you false start the second time, you're disqualified. One false start. Yeah. This is what it says. The rule states that only one false start per race is allowed without the disqualification of the athlete or athletes making the false start. Because when that, they call it jumping the gun. When that person jumps the gun, their movement makes everybody else go. And, and it's hard for people to duplicate that same energy that they had before. It says, um, any athlete making further false starts in the race shall be disqualified. Um, Okay, so let's see. False starts, just one chance. <laughs> yeah, they call it jumping the gun. And jumping the gun, we understand that now because they have the starter's pistol. So if you go below before the bullet goes off. Okay. It says, um, okay. I'm looking for something that explains it well. Okay, here we go. What I'm reading here is from the Washington Compost, as I heard someone call it. All right. It says, under the previous rule, the entire field was giving a warning in the event of a false start. Anyone in the same race who jumped the gun a second time would be disqualified, even if it wasn't the first offender. But in 2010, the International Association of Athletic Federations 
change the rules to its current draconian level because of two reasons. Under the old rule, slower runners would purposely jump the gun to throw off everyone else's timing and give themselves an edge. And the sheer number of false starts slowed down meets and causes television broadcasts to run over their time slots. So there you go. Problems. Okay. All right, so that's the reason. Is because if you're slow, you could give yourself an advantage by throwing that person off. So we, we're dealing with a sly devil. All right, let me see if I can find anything else about this. Um, the thing about his, all he cares about is our misery. He doesn't care about anything else. It's like Haman. If you remember the story of um, Queen Esther, when they were in Babylon, and Haman, he had so much. He was the second in command to the king. He was wealthy beyond his wildest dreams, but he said none of it made anything. It meant nothing to him. It didn't make him happy because of Mordecai the Jew. Because Mordecai the Jew refused to get up and bow down when Haman came in the room. So there you go. I mean, yeah, Mordecai refused. And it was because of his uh, relationship with God. And that's the one thing that we'll give up and die for. That we won't give up and we'll die for for it. We'll give up anything else except that. And that's the one thing that Haman could not stand. He had money. He had prestige. He had everything that you could think of. But what he did not have was uh, the worship of this one person. And he could think of nothing else but to destroy this man and all the Jews because of it even though Mordecai was the only one that was refusing to bow down to him, that we're told in the Bible. So there you go. We're not going to worship a person. We're not going to excuse your filthy behavior. And that's the way it goes. So the other thing was this lady wanted to take too much stuff. And I had learned. The, the good thing about it is having to gear up a second time you can learn from all the things that you did wrong the last time. I can. And even though our momentum has been taken away because of a false start, we can still stop and think and pray and let it do what the Bible says the Lord always does. He, all things work together for our good. And don't forget that scripture. When, it's, when you hear the time to go, when they say you can't buy or sell, go. Don't, don't go back to take anything. Escape, because it's going to be so much worse here than what we think. You're not going to fare well in those camps or whatever uh, what they call them. Quarantine places. It's not. No. Don't go there. If you can, if you can escape, escape. Plan on it. You'll be glad you did, and you'll be sorry if you don't. And it's worth a try. It's worth a try. And don't go peaceably. Don't go peaceably. Make them. It could wake someone up if we refuse to go peaceably because they're going to make it seem like they're just doing this for everybody's good. But if we don't go peaceably, we'll make them show their viciousness. And it, the Bible also says in the book of Daniel that the Antichrist, I believe it's in Daniel, he worships the God of forces. He had all force behind him. All earthly force was behind him. 
all these kingdoms gave their power to the beast. There wasn't any um, local, national, or international body that will stand up against him. There won't be one. What will destroy that kingdom is the coming of the Lord. Because of deception. So, all right, let me let me end this because it's probably pretty long. Ooh. All right. God bless everybody.